Hello, my friend and friends. If you declare a width of 1000 pixels, you're expecting your element to become a thousand pixels wide, right? Well, if that's the case, then how come this element here, which clearly is not 1000 pixels wide, isn't a thousand pixels wide when I'm declaring a width of 1000 pixels on it? Now, maybe you're paying attention here and you looked up at the HTML and you noticed that it is a span. You said, well, Kevin, it's not a thousand pixels wide because it's a span and spans are inline elements and we can't declare widths on inline elements or the width won't actually do anything. Well, that's awesome that you know that and it's great, but but then the question becomes, why can't we declare a width on an inline element? Shouldn't a width be a width be a width no matter where we're using it? But clearly that's not the case. And we can change this up a little bit. Like for example, I could come here and we can actually get this to work by saying this is a display of block. And when I do that, now it will go to exactly 1000 pixels wide, even causing some overflow if it gets there, because we're saying it's exactly 1000 pixels wide, but it's a block level element now. So it's coming and it's breaking onto another line. And maybe I don't want that to happen but this span is inside of a paragraph. So I could come on this paragraph and I could say display flex here to get them to stay in line with each other. Except now when I do that, sometimes it's a thousand pixels wide, but then other times it's less than a thousand pixels wide, even though I'm saying it should have a width of a thousand pixels. And this is kind of strange when you start thinking about it because it's a pretty straightforward declaration with 1000 pixels, yet depending on the situation we're going into, it's not always a thousand pixels. And then there's other situations where you don't actually have a width declared, but the default behaviors are changing. For example, if we take the width of a thousand pixels off here and I take off this display of flex that's right here, now my element is a block element. So it's going f as wide as it can possibly get. It's taking up the full width of the parent. But if I come on here and I keep that display block, but I say it's actually a position absolute, well, now it's actually going to shrink shrink down to the size of the content that's inside of it. And so we run into situations like this where even the width of something can change when we don't have a declared width. Here we have it as small and as soon as I take off the position absolute, my display block goes to being large again. Well, to make sense of this, let's shift gears for a second and just rewind a little bit to when you were first learning CSS. When we first learn it, we're learning about a whole bunch of stuff like the box model and the syntax and all these other things. But like the main thing that just gets reinforced over and over again is it's all about property value pairs right? We're writing a declarative language, color, blue, background, black, font family, sans serif, all these things, property value, it changes, it does exactly what we've told it to do. And then we just move on and go from there. And this, in my opinion, tricks us into thinking that CSS is a much simpler language than what it actually is. Because over and over and over again, we do a single property value pair and we get exactly what we were declaring. We just move on and we just keep doing this. It just reinforces this simplicity in those early days. But there are some properties that we can use that actually completely change how things are working under the hood. And that's when we're changing either our display or our positioning. When we change those, we're changing the layout mode that's being used Used, which is literally changing the algorithm that the browser is using to create the layout. And with all these layout modes, just really quickly, we have normal flow, which is both block and inline, which as we've already seen, don't work quite the same way either. Then we have grid, we have flexbox, we have table layouts, everybody loves those. Uh, we also have multi-column, which isn't used a ton, but it can come in handy in the right situation. And then of course, there's all of our positioned layouts as well. So when we change those properties, we're doing a few different things. And the first thing is the really obvious one. So uh, say we're using position layout. You do a position of absolute or fixed or sticky or something like that. We're changing our uh, the positioning that we're using. All of a sudden we unlock a whole bunch of new properties that are available to use on that specific element, right? We get our top, bottom, right, left, the inset that goes with those. Uh, we can change the Z index and, and other things like this. In this case, when we're doing the positioning ones, we're, chain, we're, we're unlocking all these new levers and these new things that we can do on that one specific element. And I think this is the easy thing to understand because I'm changing my position and I'm going, here's all this new stuff that's becoming available to me. And this is what we always focus on is like, okay, now I have my top, bottom, left and right. But we don't think about how other things have potentially changed along the way when we've changed the layout mode. For example, when we change the layout mode by putting the position of absolute on here and then the size of the element is changing or what I think is the more clear or obvious example is when we have something like the display flex here on the parent and we'll, you know, in situations like this, let's put our width back here. And in cases like this, now the width is actually sort of becoming a suggestion instead of an actual absolute value like we might expect it to be. Another example of this that I really like is let's trick off this width 1000 pixels here. And I'm going to change my paragraph from a display of flex to a display of grid. And when we have the grid here, I'm going to do a grid template columns. 
and we'll just do, got to spell that correctly, but we'll do a 1fr, 1fr to have two columns. And there we go, we have two columns. My hello is in one column and then a thousand pixels wide is in another column here. And actually just a small little quick side tangent. Uh, when we have things like this, where it's just a string of text and it's not in an element, it's actually getting wrapped in what we call an anonymous box. So it ends up being in like its own grid cell. So if I came here with some more, uh, some more text, that's also gonna get put into its own grid cell uh, as well. And this is getting another anonymous box wrapped around it just because everything in CSS needs to be in a box. So if we're dealing with inline content like here, these are technically wrapped in like these anonymous spans, not spans, but just other inline elements. Uh, so something like this can work. You cannot target or style these in any way. <laughs> I'm just opening this up quickly with my dev tools. Just so we can see here, if I turn on my grid, you can actually see each one of those is getting placed in its own cell. So <laughs> a little side tangent there, sorry about that, but we'll keep going with what I wanted to talk about. Uh, we'll take off that extra text while we're here to do this. and. Uh, what I wanted to look at in this case is on my box here, if I came in with a width of 50%, width 50% in this situation actually works differently than a width of 50% would work in other situations. Because in almost every situation you can get into, when we set a width using a percentage, that's always a percentage of the size of the parent element. But in this case, it's actually 50% of the grid cell that it's inside of. So actually we should probably turn on our dev tools once again. And if we go and turn that grid back on right there, we can visualize our grid. And now that's always 50% of its grid cell. It might look a little bit better, bigger because I do have that border on there and I haven't redeclared my box sizing anywhere. But yeah, this is always going to be 50% of that. Whereas as I said, 50% normally would actually be 50% of the parent. And all of this is really important because when we do something like display grid on the parent, we're doing a lot of different things, right? We've unlocked these new properties here and a bunch of new values and, and different things we can do there. We've also unlocked new properties and values that we can be using on the children. But at the same time, we've also changed how certain things are working on the children. Like my width of 50% in the grid context is based not on the size of the parent anymore. It's now based on the cell like we're looking at right now, or like we saw before with the Flexbox example. However, if I said width is 1000 pixels in this context, it will be exactly 1000 pixels. And it's just going to shoot over and overflow out of the parent. And it actually breaks my FRs a little bit. Uh, just because of the way FR works, it's about the available extra space, but that is going to be a thousand pixels wide and cause overflow like it normally would. But if we switch this back over to a flex context, then this width of a thousand pixels goes out the window and becomes more of a suggestion thanks to how the flex shrink is working. And all of this and all these things that can seem very inconsistent can feel just so frustrating because you learned how width works and then it's not working that way and you told it to do something and it's not doing what you were taught that it would do. And it definitely is one of those things that leads to, or at least in my own experience, leads to the most frustration with CSS. And you might be watching this going, Kevin, this is exactly why I hate CSS. And if that's the case, hopefully this helps you shift things. It was a long introduction, but I really wanted to go through a lot of these potential pitfalls or things that people run into along the way, just to really highlight these inconsistencies to then explain why they're there. And this is where the mindset shift needs to happen when we're working with CSS, because we're not working with CSS as this one thing. As I said earlier, we're working with all these different layout modes. And with each one of those layout modes, we're getting a different algorithm and how the browser is creating the layout. So when we're early on and we're just learning all of those new bits that come with something like say display grid gives you grid template columns and grid template rows and all of these new things, that's great. We need to learn all of that, but we need to sort of go, I'm in a new layout mode and things are going to probably work differently in this context. It might not, maybe things are gonna work exactly how you're used to them working, but every time we're learning about a new way to create a layout or a new positioning property, you have to go, there might be some things that work differently here because I'm, I've am i switched, I've turned, you know, I've turned off that layout mode, I've turned on a new layout mode and all of those properties are still there, but that does not mean that they work in the same way. And just being conscious of that going, okay, things may be different is going to make your life a lot easier. The other thing that does make it easier is I find a lot of the changes that do happen, do it in a very uh, intuitive way. When you do a display flex on things, if they didn't become squishy by default, it would ruin a lot of the coolness and the, the well, not coolness, but the usefulness, I, I find it cool, but a lot of the usefulness of Flexbox, right? If you had to manually then like enable the shrink to come in. 
if you need to disable it, there's ways of doing it, but I think it makes sense. Or with that grid example that I was looking at where the width of 50% being based on the cell does make a little bit more sense when you're thinking of, okay, I'm not, I'm not worried about how this used to work. I'm just worried about how it works in this context and having the width of 50% based on the cell is a lot more useful and just more intuitive than if it was based on the width of the parent. Side note, if you really needed it to be based on the width of the parent, these days we could use a defined container on the parent and you have container query units that you could use. I'm not gonna talk about those in this video, but those possibilities are there if you really need them. But yeah, once you shift out of the thing of this is CSS and this is how this property works and you go CSS is a collection of different modes of working and maybe that drives you nuts, but that is how it is and that's how it's going to be and there'd be new things coming. I know a few of them that are on the way where there might be some more of these things that change and it makes it a lot less frustrating because what happens is when you run into a problem now, Instead of going, my width isn't working or this property isn't working, it can be a lot of different things, but it's when you try something and it doesn't work the way you're expecting it to work, it's probably because you've been trained on this is how this one thing works and you're familiar with it and now in this other place where you're using it, it's not working. And that just feels really frustrating. You don't go, okay, this property is broken or this property value pair I'm trying to use is broken. It's stupid, nothing makes any sense. You go, oh, I'm using this in a different layout mode than I've used before. Let me see how that works in this layout mode. And that, first of all, helps explain things. I've changed into a new mode, so things will probably act differently, but it also makes it a lot easier to fix because when you're looking, you know, Googling or asking AI or whatever you're doing, going on a Discord server, it doesn't matter what it is. When you're looking for help on fixing it, or if you're just trying to brainstorm yourself on how to fix it, you're not stuck in this sea of CSS <laughs> where this thing that always worked for you isn't working, but now you have this more defined area to look it up. Why is the width of a percentage not based on the parent when I'm in grid? You can definitely find that a lot easier than if you're just going, why isn't my 50% width percentage working period, right? When you define the context that you're working in, a lot more things just get there and everything gets a lot easier in the long run. And then as you continue learning new things and you know the next new CSS thing comes up, or maybe you haven't learned grid yet and you're getting into grid, just having that full mindset shift of, okay, in this situation, these are the new things that I'm getting with it, but also a lot of the other things that I know might be a little bit different. And just being open-minded to that and trying to understand why they're different will make things a lot easier on you. So hopefully this idea makes CSS just a little bit less frustrating for you as you continue learning it or the debugging or whatever you're getting into. And it just helps you make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.